Hi, Real Life Kids. Welcome back. It's time for the last lesson in our family series. We're going to be talking more about Jacob this week. But first, let's review our memory verse. Anybody remember the verse? It was Romans 8, 28. Say it after me. In all things, God works. In all things, God works for the good. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purposes. That's good stuff. I love the idea that no matter what happens to me, I can trust that God will make it all work out for my good as long as I continue to love and trust him. That's kind of how our story today goes. Do you remember from last week, all the stuff that Jacob did to Esau? He wrecked his family in the way that he treated Esau. But even so, God didn't abandon him. God had chosen Jacob for a big plan that he had, and Jacob's sin wasn't going to get in the way of that. Our big idea today is God wants to help families heal. Let's jump into it. You can follow along in Genesis 32, starting in verse 3. Jacob now sent messengers to his brother Esau in Edom, the land of Seir. He told them, give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant, Jacob. I have been living with Uncle Laban until recently, and now I have sent these messengers to inform you of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to us. The messengers returned with the news that Esau was on his way to meet Jacob with an army of 400 men. Holy moly, so Jacob had been gone for 20 years, and he hoped that Esau's anger against him had cooled down. But now it looks like he's just been waiting for Jacob to come back so that he can attack him with an army. Can you imagine how scared you would be if there were 400 men coming to meet you, led by a man that you had cheated so badly? Jacob was terrified at the news, and he prayed, O oh God of my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac, O oh Lord, you told me to return to my land and to my relatives, and you promised to treat me kindly. I am not worthy of all the faithfulness and unfailing love you have shown to me, your servant. O oh Lord, please rescue me from my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to kill me along with my wives and children. Jacob prepared a present for Esau. He told his servants to lead them on ahead, each a group of animals by itself, separated by a distance in between. He gave these instructions to the men leading the animals. When you meet Esau, tell him, these belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present for his master Esau, and he is coming right behind us. Jacob's plan was to appease Esau with the presence before meeting him face to face. Perhaps Jacob hoped he will be friendly to us. Do you think it was a good idea to send all those presents ahead of him? How would you feel if you got one of those gifts? Do you think you might feel a little bit less angry? Jacob sent his gifts in five different waves, hoping that each time Esau saw, Esau saw the presents, he would feel just a little bit warmer toward Jacob. Do you think it worked? Then, in the distance, Jacob saw Esau coming with his 400 men. As he approached his brother, he bowed low seven times before him. Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him affectionately and kissed him. Both of them were in tears. We don't know if it was the gifts that changed Esau's mind, Maybe he'd been so bitter about everything Jacob had taken from him that when he saw all that Jacob was giving him, he didn't feel so angry. However he did it, God was watching out for Jacob and helping his family to heal. Are there hurts in your family that need healing? Do you have a brother or sister that maybe they took something from you and you're still mad at them? Maybe your mom or your dad punished you for something? and you don't feel like it was fair. And it's easy to let that anger and that bitterness grow inside of you. And sometimes it feels like it makes you feel better to hold on to that. <clears throat> but as anger and bitterness grow, 
they always end up taking a lot more than they give. Talk to people gently about the ways that you feel angry with them. Listen to them talk about what happened. Sometimes they might say they're sorry and even give back what they took. Or you might find out you understand what the, they did, why they did what they did. And when you have a hard time forgiving or asking for forgiveness, you can go to the Lord and ask him to help you. He's always ready to help people love each other better. That's a great idea. Why don't we pray right now? Thank you, Father, that you care about our families. Um, thank you that you care to help us love each other better. So we ask you for that. Help us to love each other better, to forgive and to um, receive forgiveness and to treat each other the right way. Thanks again for joining us. Parents, don't forget to join Real Life Parents on Facebook. Have a great day. Bye.